I do not know where she got this. Her parents were not at all aware or open to such an understanding. A few years later, I asked this little girl about us having blue skin in the future, and she did not understand why she had said that or where it came from. It was like... It was like that with Borsica, the Mars child. The older he got, the less he remembered about his life on Mars. As we get older, we lose our understanding and connection with, the, with other worlds and how time and space really works. But does it, what is up with the young girl telling me such a thing out of the blue? Excuse the pun. Are these children seed planting hints of the cosmic understanding? Inside the planet it is said to be lit by a blue star that makes their skin have a blue tinge. The Hopi speak of the blue star, which is currently behind Mars satellite moon Phobos, that will act like a second sun for the Earth, and will give our skin a bluish tinge. The Indian god Krishna is blue, and so are the Adronomans. I do not know about you, but I find this interesting. How is it that my friend's son said to his father one day at nine years of age, Dad, I have to tell you something. I have come from that land inside this planet to prepare the people who live in the surface for our future, to who live on the surface for our reunion with them. I am one of the nine who is on the planet at this time and with this particular task, and there will be more coming, Dad. The surface people are ready to know about us. Then the little boy went off to play, just like that, leaving his dad boggled until he remembered me talking to him about the hollow earth one time. Now he understood what I was saying about the kids and about the planet. When he told me this, we both knew that I needed to talk with his son, that perhaps he has managed to hold on to his memories and I could interview him. I even shared this on the, the book... I even shared this on the Brooks Agnew radio show. For those of you who are not familiar with him, he is a physicist that speaks a good deal about the hollow earth. He is also the one who is planning to put together a voyage to sail inside the planet via going um, past Greenland. He will be taking 100 people and 70 of them will be scientists. Brooks intends to get physical proof and I believe he will be successful with this. It is time, and they are not the military. The military have been trying to get in for a very long time. The military have been trying to get in for a very long time and have not had much success. They could only get to some layers, like the lower chakra realms, but not the center. They are not allowed there unless they have done their inner work and have the understanding of love, which they still lack. There are some places that one cannot get through to with the mind's comprehension. The heart is the key. So if you do not have that key, it does not matter how smart you may be. Access denied. Sorry. If you think this is just flaky New Age jargon, consider Admiral Byrd saying that the reason he was granted access inside the earth was because he had a pure heart. Some have said, the same is said to the story of the father and the son that sailed into the land inside the planet and lived with the giants peacefully for two years. Or why children who have pure hearts can see things we cannot. Brooks is, ta is, Brooks is taking the pure heart thing very seriously. And the other 20% will be the ones who possess this feature. Now with the idea that the planet is hollow we can now understand why in the past the people thought the earth was flat and why they thought if you go too far you would fall off the planet. It is like the Pirates of the Caribbean 3 at World's End. Could it be that they fell into the inner earth and flipped upside down? Like how they ended up coming back as well? I will decode the rest of this very interesting, highly symbolic movie another time. I wonder why others do not see what I see. Oh, it is some... It is something else when I watch movies. <laughs> I get so much. Up is down and down is up. In the part where it seemed like Captain Jack Sparrow was mad as he ran back and forth trying to rock the boat so that he could so that they could flip up on the other side. It seems like the surface of the earth is doing this right now. We've been doing this in our mind. Right brain, left brain, no right brain, left brain. Yin, yang, yes, no, ah, contradiction. Uh, so n many are rocking the planet with their extremes of one way than the other way. And back and forth we go. Are we symbolically flipping ourselves to the inside of the planet? Do you think 
don't, don't you think it's interesting how in Alice in Wonderland, when she falls down the rabbit hole, she falls past the mirror with, and there's a reflection showing her falling up? What do you think this tells you? Up is down. Yes, the so North Pole is down. actually the South Pole. Symbolized how backwards the North Pole down the world Why is. Why do you think Apostle Peter... Same Peter deal with the royalty on our playing card. This can also help us understand why the Earth is on, is an axis to symbolize a crooked world. After the shift, the planetary poles will flip back and the Earth will straighten its spine and no longer take dung from anyone. Sinbad's stories were not so far off after all either, or Disney's The Atlantis movie. Maybe it's called Legend of Atlantis. Have you guys seen that movie? Atlantis is inside the planet and has a giant, and has a giant blue crystal that keeps them alive. More on Atlantis and Lemurian uh, videos to come. And David Icke says the biggest secret is that reptiles rule the world. Then the second biggest secret cover-up of all time is the attempt to keep secret the fact that there is a very advanced civilization of people living in the center of the Earth, where most of the UFOs are made, terrestrial, not extraterrestrial. The civilization is known as Agartha. To begin with, Buddhist theology affirms its existence. It is believed to be a race of superhuman, supermen and superwomen who occasionally come to the surface to oversee the development of the human race. It is also believed that this subterranean world has millions of inhabitants and many cities, its capital being Shambhala. The king of this world is believed to have given orders to the Dalai Lama of Tibet, who... I just bad. <laughs> who is his terrestrial representative. His message his messages are transmitted through certain secret tunnels connecting the inner earth the inner world of Agartha with Tibet. The entrance of this tunnel was guarded by lamas who were sworn by sec- sworn to secrecy. A similar tunnel was believed to connect the secret chambers at the base of the Great Pyramid at Giza with Agartha. <laughs> I burped again. The astral key to the inner earth for the Tibet is the Viral, also known as Dorji, and the real pers- and the real reason Tibet has been held down. A little more on Rear Admiral Richard E. Byrd. The first public scientific evidence of Agartha's existence occurred in 1947 when Rear Admiral Rear that's a funny name <laughs> Admiral Richard E. Byrd of the United States Navy flew to the North Pole, and instead of going over the poles, he actually entered the inner Earth. In his diary, he tells entering the hollow interior of the Earth along with others and traveling 1,700 miles over mountains, lakes, rivers, green vegetation, and animal life. He tells of seeing monstrous animals resembling the mammoths of antiquity moving through the brush. He eventually found cities and a thriving civilization. His plane was finally greeted by flying machines of a type he had never seen before. They escorted him to a safe land place, and he was graciously greeted by emissaries from Agartha. After resting, he and his crew were taken to meet the king and the queen of Agartha. They told him that they had been allowed to enter Agartha because of his high moral and ethic character. Pure heart, a good person. They went on to say that ever since the United States had dropped atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, they had been very concerned about their own safety and survival. They had decided that it was time to make greater contact with the outside world to make sure humanity didn't destroy the planet and their civilization within it. Hmm, reminds me of the movie of the Abyss. Bird had been allowed in so they could make contact with someone that they trusted. To make a long story short, when their first when their visit was finished, Admiral Bird and his crew were guided to in their plane back to the outer world, their lives having been changed forever. I bet. In January of 1956, Admiral Byrd led an expedition to the South Pole. On that expedition, he and his crew penetrated 2,300 miles into the center of the Earth. Admiral Byrd states that the North and the South Poles are only two of the many openings into the center of the Earth. Admiral Byrd also states that the inner Earth has its own sun. Byrd's theory is that the poles of the Earth are concave rather than convex, and ships and planes can actually sail or fly right in. Kind of like a big... The American press announced Admiral Byrd's discovery, but it was immediately suppressed by our good friends, the secret government. Ray Palmer, the editor of the magazine Flying Saucer, published a detailed story about Admiral Byrd's discoveries. The United States government bought, stole, or destroyed almost every copy and then destroyed the plates at the printing office. 
I have been told exactly the same thing happened to an article about Admiral Byrd's discovery published by National Geographic. 